What is up guys, if you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon by day. I'm a content creator by night and I'm also a home lab tinkerer or an ex home lab tinkerer. I like to go, I like to think of myself as a home lab, home lab tinkerer for life. I've been in the trenches of instant response, detection engineering, threat hunting, cloud security, and all of this, my entire career, all really started with a spark in my bedroom back then in this small apartment five years ago. Back then, I was just getting into cybersecurity and I built my first home lab with nothing but curiosity. No experience, no sort of guidance, no hand holding. I had some computer parts and a lot of Google searches and YouTube uh, videos that I watched. And that project, it changed everything. It was the first time that I saw what was really happening behind the scenes on a network, on a host, on a virtual machine, because uh, it was virtualized, right? And I've been hooked ever since. I've literally been so hooked on building, on designing environments, on security really, right? But now I'm leveling up, right? I'm not that uh, cybersecurity newbie that I was five years ago. And I wanna take this home lab that I built several years ago into the next stage of its evolution. So I'm converting my old PC into a type one hypervisor, which means I'm gonna be running directly on bare metal. So there's no OS sitting in between, just pure performance and control. And this setup is going to power my new home security operation center. And I'm bringing y'all along for the ride. We're gonna start with like setting up the host, the actual infrastructure, the actual hardware for uh, being able to manage uh, these different operating systems I'm going to be running and I'm going to be using Proxmos for that. Uh, we're also going to be using Waza as the core of the stack. It's going to do a double duty as my SIM and XDR platform and also for cyber threat intelligence. And also, I'm going to have agents rolling out to every endpoint in the house. So all, all the MacBooks, all the Windows boxes, whatever endpoint I have, even IoT devices, I want eyes on every single thing. And I'm still figuring out the rest of the stack. I might maybe throw in Suricata, I don't know, some Zeke or something, maybe Velociraptor for actual endpoint detection response. I know Waza has um, an active response module, so I might not need all of that, but I'm gonna keep this build totally or organic. I'm gonna be learning in public and just adjusting as I go and vlogging all of it on this channel. Plus, another cool thing is I'm gonna be exploring how AI fits into all of this, all the stuff around LLMs, MCPs, and not just using these buzzwords, but actually experimenting with using LLMs, automation, and anomaly detection to help me understand triage investigate detect and respond smarter also let me just get this out of the way this is not going to be a tutorial by any means at all okay i'm not giving you a tutorial on how to build a home lab there's enough content out there for that this and it's this is not a finished product it's going to be a journey that i'm going to enjoy doing for myself and just for my own personal learning and if you're trying to get deeper into cybersecurity or build your own lab or just get hands-on with the tools we talk about every day this is where it starts right and i don't want to do this just to give you another tutorial so join me on this journey and let's dive right into the first vlog of me actually setting up the host the actual bare metal and just figuring out this whole type one hypervisor thing let's get right into it So for this portion, I'm actually trying to connect the host to my home network and I couldn't for the life of me figure that out for the longest time. It took a bunch of trial and error to eventually get a working solution and I think this also sort of highlighted my rusty technical chops with regards to computer hardware. I really had to fail through this before actually figuring it out and just really trying a bunch of random things that didn't work out, but thankfully it eventually worked out. Okay, so I've tried a lot of alternative ways, but I just figured 
saving myself the stress, plug in the old school way, HDMI to HDMI. I've got an HDMI port here, so I'm gonna flip that and you should be able to see HDMI right there. So I'm just gonna connect HDMI here. I can get it in. All right, and just connect it to my uh, USB hub right over there. If you look, so right there. So I'm just gonna connect it right there to my USB hub and we'll just do a quick, you know, like setup for the computer, turn it to a server and be able to move on with our lives instead of all this extra stuff. So done the HDMI swap, what I need to do now is to actually validate if that worked in the first place and then get this thing set up. Okay, so quick change in plans. I realize I have a capture card, so I might actually be able to try that first before, you know, doing the HDMI last resort situation. So I'm gonna follow this quick guide here and see if it actually works. Laptop. Next time I need the help of an Hummy capture device that uses a USB port. This device helps to convert from HDMI to USB. So I'm actually gonna hack in it a little bit. Um, I have a cap capture card, like a cam link, and I'm gonna use that to connect to HDMI over here. Um, so, oh, actually the other way. Gosh. All right, there we go. And we'll see if this works. HDMI to USB converter. You will find it as a USB video device. That doesn't work. All right, so I decided to go a different way, a different route entirely. Um, I've got um, an HDMI going directly from the graphics card of the PC right there, all the way to the monitor. As you can see that cable right there. I'm gonna fix up the cable management in a sec, but I just validated that it works, so that's good. And then uh, now we can proceed to the next step, which is actually formatting this PC and actually getting it to be a server. All right, so this is where the real party begins. Um, I'm just gonna switch the input to HDMI 2. Make sure this is on. I have this keyboard switched over to piece to Windows mode, and um, I can now actually log into this. And I'm not gonna let y'all see my password because that's just not good hygiene. So I'm gonna log in now. Remember the password for this. There we go. Okay. All right, so we're logging in right now. Um, just trying to get this thing up and running. I think I'm just gonna immediately format it. Um, I haven't formatted a PC in a while, so I'll have to figure out how to do that. All right, so um, I'm going to be downloading Rufus um, on this computer so that I can create a bootable USB drive and then use that to uh, boot Proxmox after I format this uh, Windows PC. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is my first time trying out a Type 1 hypervisor setup. 
and I was kind of worried that I might break my hardware, but it turned out fine eventually. Of course, again, after some trial and error and reading a bunch of blogs and watching a bunch of YouTube videos to help me with this. So I eventually got the setup done for the Type 1 hypervisor. Well, actually not for the Type 1 hypervisor, for the host itself, like formatted in and everything. So the next step is just messing around with the bio settings, but not really doing anything. I thought I might have been able to try to squeeze out some extra performance out of the host by maybe tweaking some things in this settings, but nothing really came out of messing around here. I was just able to boot from the de uh, from the hardware that I had installed Proxmox on. So yeah, that's the whole crux of this section. Okay, as you can see previously, um, when I did the uh, graphical install, there wasn't, there was like, it was just like, I guess not um, crashing, but it's kind of like just stopping at um, the portion where um, it's installing drivers. So I think there's an issue there and I'm going to try to fix it uh, by going into edit mode by pressing E. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to try to edit the installation kernel parameters. Uh, let's see if I can do that. So, okay, this is these are the parameters. And I need to add, the, add a string to the kernel um, here. So let's see what I can do. Uh, so I'm following like a, a guy from a Proximus forum. And it says I need to do this by typing in it call underscore black list equals NVIDIA 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 FB underscore init. So init call underscore blacklist 
equals nvidia fb in it hopefully that fixes it we're about to find out all right i'm gonna do a control x and then let's try this again see if it works okay so this is usually where it stops um there's this nvidia fb thing again so i think maybe that didn't work i might have to try that again but if it hangs up here i'm going to try it again or try another fix and see what works okay so i'm going to take a different approach to this and i think this is where the kernel parameters are um i'm gonna add that um what i was going to add to this um, because this is linux um and i believe this is probably where it wants me to add it so i'm going to do the same thing here init call underscore black list equals nvidia fb underscore in it hopefully that work oh it works it works it's working whoa that's awesome oh my goodness that is so awesome it's working it's working sheesh let's go this is amazing wow there we go all right perfect all right i agree uh let's see uh, yeah, I have about one terabyte. Yeah, that, that works. Next, uh, time zone, country. Let's set it up. I'm going to do all of that. Um, I'm going to speed through it. Alright, that's it for the first installments in this new series, and we're just getting started. This is just the blueprint, the foundation. Not really the blueprint, because I haven't done the ar architectural diagram, so this is just the foundation. Next up, we're going to be diving straight into deploying Waza on Proximus and getting the SIM and XDR stack all set up. We're going to set up all the login, all the agents, and just nerd out on all of those fun security operations deployment stuff. I'll be showing you exactly how I'm going to roll out all the different agents to every endpoint point in my home that I can possibly think of. My laptops, my uh, workstations. I don't even know if it's possible for mobile devices or even just random stuff in the house. We'll see what we can get telemetry for, but I'm excited for that. Basically, if something is talking to the internet, I want to see it. And if it misbehaves, I want to catch it. I want to detect it. And I want to be able to respond and remediate that. So if you're trying to build out your own home sock or home lab, whatever it is you want to do, just trying to level up your detection game, or you just want to nerd out and learn with me, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next with this series. Also, if you haven't seen my first home lab series, check out this playlist over here. I go into all the details here and this lab has definitely helped a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of feedback on how it's really changed a lot of people's lives with regards to them building it out and then helping them with job interviews and job offers, all of these different things that changed my life. So maybe you should go check it out over here. I'll see you in the next video.